let's uh, pivot a little bit here to talk about some of the uh, awards this season. So yeah. our show through the balance of the year, we've been handicapping these every single week, trying to find value in the future markets because, you know, frankly, it's one of the more interesting side plots of the NFL. Like it's very difficult to predict the winner, you know, so the Super Bowl, betting on the Super Bowl and the conference and all that sort of stuff, you know, it's, it's a little, it's, it's just tougher to uh, make money that way. But the awards markets were basically, uh, you know, shaping a lot of these. And the one that's been the most kind of come up the most, people ask us the most questions about has been coach of the year and usually at, by this time we have a pretty good idea who's going to win what like there's not a lot of uncertainty once all the games have been played but it feels like coach of the year is still kind of up in the air with like maybe a, a three team you know three three horse race here um how do you look at uh, what to expect when the coach of the year b- votes get tallied and uh you know who do you think is you know the most deserving candidate you know i'm i voted for brian dable of the giants but it's always strange when you do these award votes because everybody talks about the MVP the whole year. Mm -hmm. I think everybody pretty much feels like Patrick Mahomes is going to win it. And I think he should, he's got my vote, but the coach of the year is so difficult this year and it's difficult many years. I mean, I'll tell you, I thought very serious about and, and is seriously about, I thought very seriously about uh, Kyle Shanahan And for a while, I was going to give it to Kyle Shanahan. But then watching the Giants down the stretch, uh, you you know, clinch a playoff spot after stumbling a few times and watching Brian Dable resuscitate the career of of Daniel Jones. uh, (laughs) I I just I look, I thought the Giants were going to be a bottom four team entering the season. No question. No ifs, ands or buts about they had to get their cap right. They cut a bunch of good players like James Bradbury, and, you know, they, they were a total absolute mess. So Brian Dayball gets my vote. I think Shanahan deserves a lot of consideration. I think Sean McDermott does too. The other two guys who I, it, it pained me not to put him in my top three. One is Mike Tomlin, who, I, I mean, I don't know how in the world the Pittsburgh Steelers finish nine and eight. Tell me, please. I, <laughs> I don't know. You know, as a Steelers fan, Pete, I don't know. I really I don't know. Know. I mean, <laughs> that was pretty incredible. But you know what? I liked the last three, four weeks overall of Kenny Pickett. And I I feel like he gives them a little bit of hope going into next year. And then the other guy is Kevin O'Connell. And, you know, I feel bad. You can only vote for, you know, one of these guys. And, and, and the AP ballot asks you to vote for your top three. So my top three in order were Dable, Shanahan, and McDermott. Yeah, I love that. I placed a little Dable a week ago, uh, so I'm very excited to hear you say that. And I agree with you. I didn't expect the Giants to be anything more than a five or six win team. And the fact that they did a complete 180. I didn't they think were, they'd win I mean, five or six games. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, that's, I, I'm being honest. I mean, if you asked me to pick before the year, I would have said three wins, maybe four at the outside five. That's how good yes. a job I think Dable did. Yeah, and Saquon Barkley being healthy certainly helped. Daniel yeah. Jones only throwing five interceptions this season, having a career high in yards and completion percentage. I mean, he's done a terrific, terrific job. And you just look at week one, that two-point conversion to win the game shaped their entire season. All right. Yeah. So I, I really like Dable here. But like you said, there's so many qualified candidates. And it, the same goes for the Comeback Player of the Year award because I'm, I'm pretty much in on Geno Smith. Uh, we didn't think that he would be the starter. We didn't think he'd lead Seattle to the playoffs. We saw how bad Denver looked with Russell Wilson. And Geno Smith just really fit right in. But on the other side of that, there's two running backs that were top 10 picks in fantasy. They're always hurt. But this year, they were healthy. And it made the difference, Christian McCaffrey and Saquon Barkley. So my question to you is, this is obviously a three-person race. I will not throw Jared Goff's name in here. Who do you like of those first three? Well, look, uh, I didn't vote for any of the people you just referred to. Oh, I mean, okay. I voted, for, I voted for Nick Gates, the center uh, of the Giants, for a guy who uh, has his tibia shattered, and then 13 months later, and also his fibula broken, and then 13 months later, I mean, he had three major breaks of bones in his leg, and for him then to reclaim his starting job with the Giants, basically 14 months later. I, I'm sorry. I, it's an open and shut case for me. Uh, as far as everybody else in under consideration, I voted Barkley second and Geno Smith third. 
Okay. And look, everybody will say, well, geez, Geno Smith wasn't hurt. He, he, he what is that a comeback from the bench? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, it is. I think it's justified to vote for Geno <laughs> Smith. I think it's, I think it's absolutely fine because there is no definition of the comeback player of the year. Award. No, there no. isn't one. You can, you can have them come back from injury, uh, from a personal problem, from being exiled to nowhere as Geno Smith has done for seven years. I, I, I so anybody who votes for Geno Smith, I have no problem. I wouldn't have a problem if you voted for, uh, if you voted for Jared Goff either. I mean, to me, the it's Detroit Lions, that's another, I mean, to not vote for Dan Campbell here, to not vote for Doug Peterson. I mean, there are seven yeah. coaches that you absolutely could justify, uh, you, you know, being here. But, but, but here's what I say about Jared Goff. Okay. The Detroit Lions are stumbling around uh, after seven games. They're one in six. It looks like the same old Lions. Chris Spielman and Brad Holmes are going to go look for another coach after this season. And then in the last nine games, they go seven and two. And golf's touchdown to interception ratio is 15 to zero. Now, I don't know what else you have to do to get consideration for some award reclamation project of the decade maybe <laughs> but i mean jared goff i think uh, you know i tip my hat to him uh for what he did this year with the lions plus all these other guys aiden hutchinson great yeah jamal williams great panay sewell mm -hmm. great i mean they, they this is a great example of what happens when you draft well and you have a lot of high picks. Not to derail us, but do you think Goff earned the long-term starting role in Detroit? Or if you he were Detroit? Deserved, yeah. he, he, look, yeah. he's got two more years at whatever, 30 or 31 million a year on the cap. He absolutely unequivocally enters next year as the starter for the year. And then let's see what happens. Here, okay. Here's the issue that I say with the one. It'd be dumb for them to use one of their top two picks in the first round on a quarterback, at least in my opinion. You're just muddying the waters. Jared Goff, uh, you know, what would you be saying to Jared Goff after he played this year, finished the season last year, and you pick a quarterback in the first round? You're yeah. slapping the guy in the face. So don't pick a quarterback in the first round. That would be That would hurt your team. Continue to build a rising roster of young talent. That's what Brad Holmes should do. I think there are uh, people who are kind of whispering that they have enough assets to go get a guy like Lamar Jackson if his tenure in you know Baltimore is over or something like that. I, I, I'm fascinated to see. Fascinated. I to have see a they question. Do. I have yeah. a question about Lamar Jackson. Sure. Okay? Lamar Jackson likely will miss his sixth start of the year mm -hmm. this year. That's out of eighteen. He's also missed three quarters of the game that he got hurt in. So Lamar Jackson will have missed 37% of the Ravens season injured. Last year, he missed 35% of the Ravens season injured. Here's my question. If you are any team and you are going to... Uh, sign Lamar Jackson to an offer sheet of, let's say, $45 million a year, mostly guaranteed over five years, let's just say, okay? And then you also have to give two number one draft choices to the Ravens if mm -hmm. the Ravens don't match, mm -hmm. right? Yep. That, in my opinion, is the definition of insanity. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Here's here's the problem. As quarterback starving teams do yeah. insane things. Look at what the Browns it. did last year with Watson. Look at what the Broncos did to Kit Wilson. They gave but, up but the, an absolute Wilson, king's but Russell ransom. Russell Wilson plays all the time. <laughs> sure, but you know. He was, I mean, well, you know, he's, 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 uh, what well, you know, age, age is a consideration, surely, in a lot of these I'm sure it is. Think, I'm so. sure it is. But, yeah. but, those who do not study history are condemned to repeat it or whatever sure. that dumb cliche is. Sure. Why, yeah. when you see for two years in a row, a player who makes his living 
with his legs as much as his arm. Yeah. And you are going to guarantee him forty-five million a year and give up two ones for him? Somebody's going to do mean, it. That to me, that is insanity. I I can almost promise you someone will do it. The because cra- you I'll have bet to, you, you. I'll bet you. I'll tell you. That. <laughs> I will bet you. And I don't gamble on football, but I sure. would be happy. We will bet. Let's bet a six pack of Peroni. Oh, um, now we're talking. Okay. okay. I love it. I love I'll bet it. you a six pack of Peroni. <laughs> I love and, it. And if I'm wrong, I'll write in my column. Well, geez, I was wrong about this. I, <laughs> yeah. Okay. And I'm, but but listen, but listen. Yeah. It, it has to be to me. I mean, if somebody offers them four years, thirty five million a year, mostly guaranteed, and has to give up two ones, that's not tremendously irresponsible, at least in my opinion. But if you pay him at the top of the market, you know, three top three or four quarterbacks <clears throat> and guarantee more than half of it, yeah. that I don't think anybody will do. We'll move on to offensive rookie of the year, but my final thought was just what the Browns did last year in the offseason, I think is sort they, they you know, they they take a couple of they take two, three chances as an organization in the draft on a quarterback. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. They're banging their heads against the wall. The fans are beaten down and exhausted. So they eventually are just like, fine, we'll give up everything and we'll give a, you know, a, a you know, a, a question, you know, we'll, we'll reset the market for a guy that we don't even know, uh, you know, if he's the long-term answer. And so, so teams will, teams do crazy things when their quarterback starved. Um, and what's interesting as we look at the offensive rookie of the year market, a couple things. You're right. I agree with you. I had low expectations for Kenny Pickett coming into the season, but he played amazing, particularly down the stretch. I, I mean, looking at the playoff field, I really wish the Steelers had gotten the seventh seed. I'd love to see Buffalo Pittsburgh <laughs> rather than Buffalo Miami, Easiest considering who's ever. taking the field. Um, but uh, you know, Pickett, Pickett's, you know, has I think he has an interesting case despite his statistics not being all that impressive, uh, just because of the wins. Uh, and then you know, you have a number of other wide receivers who really popped this year. A couple running backs who were extremely impressive impressive on you know playoff bound teams um which makes offensive rookie of the year the toughest handicap for me i can't tell you who's going to win at all i think it's probably going to come down to like the new voting structure and how team you know how how voters are putting two three and then ultimately how it all gets tallied together like is that a fair read on this market or do you think that there is a consensus choice i mean look again i did not vote for anybody who's I doubt I voted for somebody who was going to win. Okay. But first, let me talk about this, this race. Like to me, I think there are a lot of different candidates. I would not have Pickett in my top three. Pickett was okay. I mean, I just, uh, he would not be in my, he is not in my top three. The guy who I have winning is Tyler Algier, the Atlanta Falcons. Wow. Um, 4.9 yards a carry playing for a lousy team. Uh, had two or three huge games for them, really resuscitated their offense at times when they desperately needed it because of a bad passing game. Uh, and my number two would be Ken Walker. Number three would be Brock Purdy. I don't like voting for a guy who played only a third of the season. But if you asked me about, uh, there is not one soul on planet Earth who thought when when Brock Purdy took over uh, the quarterback job of the 49ers, that from the time he took his first snap to this moment right now, that he has been a top five quarterback in the NFL. But he has been. All you have to do is look at his week-by-week passer ratings. I think there's only one that was in the 90s, and every other one is like over 110. And so, to me, he steadied the ship for – arguably, arguably uh, one of the two or three best teams in football right now. And if Jimmy Garoppolo comes back, I don't think he's playing. I think Brock Purdy's playing. Wow. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBC Sports and Rotoworld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the, you know, autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay, respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from Rotoworld, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.